when you get to the linear metaphor, the value of the script is written, which is in the workbook of A Course in Miracles. Basically, the value is, is you start to open to just that sense of the witness self or the watcher, uh, because you start to realize that, that the whole thing of destiny, the whole thing of that you can't really change the script, it, what that does is it points you into watching your thoughts, mind training, attentiveness, and changing your mind about your mind. That's where the full focus and effort needs to be. Also, once you start to, I mean, the, the value of the script is written is basically saying that everything that you perceive as the past, and if everything's the past, and your only responsibility is to release the past. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to be, if you start to follow this course, you're going to be what? Unambitious. Mm. <laughs> Very unambitious. <laughs> I mean extremely unambitious. <laughs> you know, they talk about in America, you know, you got to have ambition, you know, fight, strive, struggle, achieve, accumulate, win, dominate, conquer. Then Jesus is coming and going, nah. <laughs> it's not any of that. He, he has things in there, I need to do nothing. <clears throat> Simply do this, be still. Uh, this is a mystic mind that's saying, aren't you glad to know that the ego made all this up? And aren't you glad to know that you can't change it? You can just change the way you look at it. You know, it's really glorious when you start to think about it. All this, think about all the stress and the pressure of trying to make the world a better place, trying to make your life better, trying to get into self-improvement. What is the self that can improve? Is it the Christ? Does Spirit need to have self-improvement classes? You know, does Spirit need to go to workshops and seminars and take things over and over and over and over? You know, no, it's the ego. It's another, it's part of this self-improvement thing, like you have to somehow make a better self. Oh, what a, talk about a hamster wheel. That's an unending thing. Mm -hmm. Am I smart enough? You know, am I rich enough? Am I skilled enough? Am I worthy enough? You know, you can see it's just like a trick to keep the mind distracted from the stillness. But of be still and know that I'm God. You know, that's the beauty of it, how simple it is. So, it's more like a surrender, you know, it, and, you know, it's like, I'm, I feel more like John Lennon. Hope one day you'll join us, <laughs> and the world will live as one, because it is as one, in healed perception. And it's, it's more like, uh, when we were talking with Greg that day about the flow and letting go of the doer, it's like, you do relax into being done through. It doesn't so much matter what it looks like. You could be picking weeds or mowing the grass or, you know, taking a walk or whatever. It, it, there's no special forms. It doesn't take a special form where you have to say, oh, I've got to find this special task, the special form that God wants me to do, so God will be so proud of me that I did it. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. It's simpler than that. It's just relaxing. That's what yeah, they said. That's like an example about how there's a tip or whatever that's made and it seems to affect a change, you know, in that. But all of that was still part of this prearranged script, you know. It, it's like the, it's all encompassing, that's the destiny. Um, that, that in the sense that it's all. It's all the past, and the only way that, that the mind is freed is by freeing itself from the belief in choice in form. In other words, the choice to take a different route. You know, the choice to put the coat on or take the coat off or do something different, you know. Um, even there's a great Star Trek episode where where they they keep coming, and they're kind of like in this time warp loop, and they keep coming to this point where the ship blows up, and then they go back through the loop again, and they're almost like, haven't we done this before? Yeah, yeah. And they keep making the same moves, and the ship blows up. Mm. And then it goes back around, mm. and they're like, something seems really familiar about this, and the ship blows up. <laughs> and they start to go, hmm, what, 
what are we going to do here? So they, I think data, they point data, and they tell him, watch out for these, they put kind of plant clues for themselves. <laughs> so then they loop back around, the ship keeps blowing up and blowing up and blowing up, until finally data does catch this little thing, and, it, and the ship doesn't blow up. And it's the same kind of thing. But, but once again, those are choices in form that seem to have a significant impact, like the ship blowing up or the ship not blowing up, or the, the president being wounded or not wounded. But what the Course is doing, is the Course is saying, is a section in the Course called The Real Alternative, where he's saying, all of the roadways of the world lead to death. In other words, it's what I've been talking about this whole thing, like in starting off with the Time Traveler's Wife, that it's all hypotheticals, it's all potential, and it's all simultaneous. And when the mind is in the state of the ego, it can seem to pick different outcomes in form. Uh, president getting wounded or not. I or, was wondering if it was an instance of collapsing time in some way. What uh, happened? The miracle seems to collapse time and rearrange perception, but ultimately where all this is heading yeah. is just to start to realize that it's all the past. And once you have that awareness that it's all the past, then your mind obviously will sink into a stillness because you won't try to fix or change the past, rearrange the past, mm -hmm. make a better past, make a better configuration of an illusion. You see, that's, that's taking it one notch up to what we're talking about is like enlightenment and self-realization. And it's beautiful because in that sense it is the witness self. It's like a sense of watching with no sense of trying to make it different. So that was, I think, I mean, I read the Course for many years, but I think one of the most profound lines that really, you know, sometimes you really just get it with a particular line, there was that line, seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. That was huge, it was like, for me, like a ton of bricks falling. Of all my days of activism and protesting things and opinions, telling people, no, you got it wrong, and <laughs> no, we have to save the whales, and we have to, you know, save, 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 and then Jesus is like, your mind needs salvation. The world is just a big distractive device, so you'll take all your energy and try to make a change where you can't have a change. Mm. If the script is written and it's all part of a prearranged plan, then why am I wasting my mind's energy trying to change the world. You see how that logic goes.